Greetings, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. New Generation Church family, I am excited to be with you on this evening, the last Sunday of the month of February. It has been a good month thus far. Just want to say I love you all and I thank you all. I am so excited to be here on this evening. If you would, go ahead and hit the share button. Uh, if you are with us on this broadcast, go ahead and hit the share button. We are very excited about the message that God has given us on this evening. And while you're doing that, um, I also want to say uh, that this evening, uh, on, on this particular video, we have our friends from Arkansas Baptist State Convention that's going to be engaging into this video as well. So I just want to say uh, thank you all for all the work uh, that you do in the state of Arkansas. We love you and we're praying for you. You all are doing a great job in expanding the kingdom of God in the state of Arkansas and through the nation and the world. We love you and we thank you. New Generation Church, go ahead and hit the share button. Uh, we are about to engage into our message for this evening. Amen. Amen. I do have a few announcements while we are waiting for people to come in. Uh, just want to, on a serious note, uh, on a very important note, just want to let everyone know that uh, our pastor, uh, Pastor Tremaine Harris, he has been vaccinated, right? Our pastor, Tremaine Harris, has been vaccinated. He's gotten the first shot and he's received the second shot. A lot of people are asking us, hey, when are we going to get back started into the in-person worship services? We are just as excited and we are waiting with uh, expectations to get back into service as well. But we want to be safe as we're going into this. I want to let you all know that I am scheduled on next week to get my first shot in the vaccination process. So just want to encourage you to be in prayer and to just go on to, uh, I believe it's Arkansas Health, to just go and find where you can receive your, your vaccinations as well. Amen. Amen. Uh, just, just another thing I want to engage you on, and that is our vision theme, right? So we released a vision theme about 30 days ago, and it's about who's your one. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's your one? Man, uh, this, you may be asking, what is, what is this? This is about each member engaging and praying about that one person that you are going to share the gospel. Yeah, and watch this. Each person at our church, each member at our church is being challenged uh, through prayer to get engaged into the work of evangelism. So we just want to engage you into this vision also. You can come to the church. We have these prayer cards ready for you. Uh, take these prayer cards. Um, you can pray for the person, add their name on this card. Uh, you can give it to us. We'll pray for them with you. And there's 30 days worth of prayer, uh, prayer scriptures on this that you can be praying for that one person that you want to uh, share the gospel with. So we are excited this year. Um, what's going on thus far? The vision, um, which is who's your one, uh, just the message that, that, that we've been doing. Also want to let you know that um, the Experiencing God books are in for the church. So if you have ordered one, you can come pick them up at the church. We are engaging into this Bible study together, this devotional together, so that we can be on one page um, in one, one mind as it relates to the Word of God and us all growing together in that Word. Amen? Amen. Also, last piece before we jump into the scriptures, I want to give you an opportunity to give to sow a seed into your church, right? Man, we are doing amazing things here at New Generation Church. Last year, we gave you all like a summary of what we're doing. I can honestly say we probably we probably distributed over fifty thousand dollars into the community last year, and so and we can and we do that because we are givers of this church. And if you are engaged into that giving process, we got some steps for you on that screen that you can engage into and to give to the work of the ministry. Amen. Amen. Um, Yep, those are my announcements, and now I am ready to engage into the Word of God, right? Right? So let's do this. Uh, turn with me to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, starting, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 4, uh, starting at verse 18. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. If you have your phone or you have your Bible, go with us to Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. Before I 
dive into the message. I just want to pray real quick. God, you are awesome. You are great. Just want to say thank you for being with us. Father, I pray that uh, you will you will uh, speak clarity through me. I pray that they will hear your word and that they will respond to the word of God. Uh, Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. And it reads, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, Jesus called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Before I dive into the text, I would like to give you some background on the text. This is not the first time that Jesus has met Andrew and Peter. Actually, the first time is recorded in the Gospels in John chapter 1, verses 35 through 41. This is the first time that Jesus has had an encounter with Andrew. Andrew, who is the brother of Peter, Andrew is introduced to Jesus. He heard about who Jesus was, perhaps from, from John the Baptist. And he, John the Baptist would go around saying that there is going to be someone greater than me that I cannot even feel his shoes. And one day Andrew met the person that John the Baptist was talking about. When he met Jesus, he ran and got his brother and Peter and brought him to Jesus just so he can say, this is the Messiah. I finally found out who the Messiah was. I finally found out who the Christ was, I finally met him for myself. And the first thing that Andrew did was that he went and got his brother Peter. That's a message all in itself. He ran and he got his brother. He ran and he got a person that he loved. He ran and he got somebody to go watch this, to go get them. He went and left where he was to go get them and bring them to Jesus. He brought him to Jesus and he introduced him to Jesus and Jesus changed changed Peter's life from that moment on. This is not the first time that watched this right here in this text. That, that was not the first time that we saw Matthew, I'm sorry, that we saw that we saw Andrew and that we saw Peter meet Jesus. See, that was their conversion experience right there in John. See, they met Jesus. They fell in love with Jesus for the first time. Do you remember your first time that you fell in love with Jesus? Do you remember your first time that you decided to give your life to Christ? I don't know. Maybe it was at a service. Maybe it was in a locker room. Maybe someone walked to you and just caught you up and started telling you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you fell in love with Jesus. Well, that was your conversion experience. Well, right here in this text is showing us that there is more than just a conversion experience. It is more to the, our faith than just saying, I believe in Jesus right here in this text. And this is what I want to talk about on this evening. Watch this. Jesus is calling Andrew. Jesus is calling Peter. Jesus is calling James. <laughs> Jesus is calling John, sons of Zebedee. He says that I am calling you to follow me. And that's what I want to talk about this evening, a call to follow Jesus. Right there in the text, Peter and Andrew have been called. James and John have been called. It says it right there in, in Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, right? He's making them fishers of men. Okay, okay, check this out, man. Um, um, the planet Mercury is close to the sun. The planet Pluto is the farthest from the sun. The planet Mercury is closest to the sun, which means that it is the hottest, the, the, the hottest of all the planets. That, 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 that's how it works. When you are close to the sun, you are on fire. You are hotter than all the other planets. See, Pluto 
is farthest from the sun. Therefore, it is colder than all the plants. And that's what God is calling us into. He's calling us into be into relationship with him. He is calling us to be close to him. He is calling us to be like the planet Mercury and to be close to the sun so that we can be on fire for Jesus. Uh, some of you may be saying, well, I may be in the middle. I'm not always hot and I'm not always cold. Maybe you're in the middle and you consider yourself like an earth type Christian or a Saturn type of Christian. Sometimes I'm on fire. Sometimes I'm close to him and sometimes I'm farther away from him. I just want to tell you on this evening, God is calling you to be in close relationship with him all the time. He wants you to be on fire for him all the time. He wants you to be close to him. Jesus says, if you are going to follow me, he'll say something like this. If you're going to follow me, I want you to be close to me. And that is what Matthew, I'm sorry, that is what James and John and Andrew and Peter, they were close to him. They were literally walking with Jesus. So we see right here going on in this text is that they are close to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, it says it right there. He, they said, come, and they left their nets. Watch this. I need y'all to see this too. This is a very good point right there in the scripture. It says that, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishermen of men. Right? And they straightway left their nets and followed him. I need you to understand, if we are going to follow Jesus, if you are going to follow Jesus, you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be willing to make some sacrifices if we are going to follow Jesus. Right there, it says in the text, Ahmad, where do you see us making sacrifices? It says that they left their nets. Their nets represented something that, 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 that uh, they depended on. Their nets represent something that they were engaged into on a consistent basis. Their nets was probably how they made a living for themselves. Matter of fact, they were fishermen by trade. This was their profession. So Jesus, watch this, he called them out of their comfort zone. My question to you, when Jesus calls you and when he has already called you, are you willing to leave your comfort zone? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are you willing to leave your nets? He called them out of their profession. If Jesus called you out of your profession to go and uh, follow him and to give your all to him, would you do it? That is what Jesus is asking some of us on today. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Um, um, I remember I remember uh, about 10 years ago, I, uh, I, um, I, I, I was uh, here in Little Rock, Arkansas, and um, I was looking for employment. I couldn't find a job. I had a, uh, had a bachelor's degree. I couldn't find a job. Uh, and I, I promise y'all, man, I probably applied for about 100 jobs. Uh, they were online and looking for a job. Could not find a job. Finally, I got an opportunity to uh, become a recruiter at a university uh, in, in, in Memphis, Tennessee. So I left Little Rock, Arkansas, and I moved to Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, to be a recruiter. Uh, became a recruiter. I was so focused on my job because I was so excited to have my job. I was so focused that I exhaled, exhaled immediately, right? I, I did some great things. God used me to be focused and I was doing my job. Man, I did so good. They promoted a brother. Oh man, I'm talking about within a year, they promoted a brother. They sent me to uh, Tampa, Florida to be a program manager. They sent me to go start training other people on, 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 on how to be an effective recruiter. I'm talking about they gave your boy a corporate card. They, 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 they gave your boy, uh, they, <laughs> they gave me a per diem. I mean, they gave me all this stuff. I was traveling the country. I was going to Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was going to Atlanta, Georgia. I was going to all different states, helping people and showing them how to uh, be effective in recruiting. They gave, they, 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 and then I got a phone call from the senior vice president. Senior vice president said, you're doing such a great job. I would like to take you on and show you how you can become a vice president of this particular business. So, man, he said, I want you to move to Washington, D.C. on the East Coast so that you can perform at a larger uh, in a larger region. So I moved to Washington, D.C. because I was on this track to become a vice president of the company. Then I got a phone call. As I was there, I was doing the best that I can do. I did the best that I could. And I promise y'all, your boy did a great job. But I got a phone call from a friend. He said that I know that you've always had a passion to serve God's church. 
And there is a position available in your hometown in Little Rock, Arkansas. Man, I prayed about it. I talked to my wife, Tangela, about it. And she was excited, too, about going home to serve in the state of Arkansas. And I said, yes, I'll do it. I put in my resignation for my job, and then they counter-offered my resignation. They said, Ahmad, you can have any campus in the state of Maryland, any campus that you want, as long as you stay. Man, I'm trying to tell you all, what happened was, check this out, I left my nets. I left what I was comfortable with. I left what, 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 what God was uh, using to support my family. I left what, what I was good at, watch this, to, 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 to serve God's church. Maybe God is not calling you to do something as drastic, but maybe he is. Maybe he's calling you to be like a missionary. Maybe he is calling you into full-time ministry. Maybe he is doing something in your life right now, and you're wondering what's going on. God may be calling you to serve his church, to serve his kingdom on a full-time basis. Or maybe God's not calling you to be that, that, that drastic of a change, but he is asking you this question. What is more important? Is your business more important than my business? Maybe God is calling you viewer. Maybe God is calling you person who's watching this broadcast right now. Maybe he's calling you and he's saying, I need to know if my work is more important than your work. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what he's saying. Because if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. You have to be willing to leave your nets. Not only does he say in the text, leave my nets, but he also, not only did he tell them to leave their nets, he also, watch this, James and John, they left their father. <laughs> See, you got to understand, if you're going to follow Jesus, you have to make some sacrifices. And watch this, you may have to leave a family member. I know, I know, I know, I know. See, and now, now understand this. Am I saying that you're leaving some family members or you're leaving some relationships to follow Jesus? Well, well, yes, I am saying that, but I'm not saying that you can't be in fellowship with them, with them anymore. What, what I'm saying is you have to. To, uh, you have to put in priority who is first. Is, is your father first or is Jesus first? Is your mother first or is Jesus first? Is your family first or is Jesus first? Is your children first or is Jesus first? What in your life may be getting in the way of you giving yourself fully to Jesus Christ? If we're going to be a follower of Jesus, we have to be willing to make some sacrifices. That's what it says right there in the text. We see that the four disciples right here in, these, in, these, uh, in this passage, they left their nets and they left their father. Uh -huh. That's what it says right there in the text. It's a beautiful text, right? Let's keep going. Right there it says, and, they, and it says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Understand that word, I will make you. Okay, okay. Make equals create. Uh-huh, watch this. Jesus says, I will make you. Uh-huh, I will create you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth didn't create themselves. God created the heavens and the earth. And what Jesus is saying right here in this text, he is saying, if you believe in me, if you decide to follow me, and when you make those sacrifices, watch this, you don't have to do nothing. I am going to turn you. I am going to create you. I am going to make you a fisherman of people. Oh, I love that. Because watch this, all I have to do is follow Jesus. All I have to do is make sacrifices for Jesus. All I have to do is make sure that he is a priority in my life. And Jesus will do the work for me. He will turn me into a fisherman of people. I need y'all to see this because in uh, when it comes to being a disciple, Jesus is talking about you becoming a fisherman of people. He ain't talking about how good you can read the Bible and, and how well you can pronounce particular words in the Bible. No, Jesus is saying, when you follow me, I will make you a fisherman of people. Oh, I love it when he says that right there in the text. But what I need for us to do, I need for us to understand the history of what a disciple is. Man, um, um. Um, I love this. This is the this is the geek, the, the spiritual nerd coming out of me, right? So 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 in this time, right? In this time, uh, the first century, by the age of five, the children 
in this village, they would have to start memorizing the book of Torah. The book of Torah is the first five books of the Old Testament. And these five-year-olds, y'all hear that? The kids at the age of five were already starting to memorize the book of Torah. I'll say that one more time for a parent. Um, <laughs> say that one more time for somebody. At the age of five, the kids in this village were already starting to memorize uh -huh, the book of Torah. Then, from the age of five all the way to 12, they would take, the leaders of the community would take the top 20 to 30%. And those were the ones who were, the kids who were committed to this. The top 20 to 30%, they'll take them and then they'll move on to the next level. And then by the time you turn to the age of 17, the kids who have pretty much graduated through this whole process, they would go look for a rabbi. Okay? Okay? They would go look for a rabbi. They want to go look for a rabbi. And they would, in a sense, apply to be their rabbi. Watch this. The rabbi did not have to accept you because the rabbi knew if I take you on, you are a reflection of me. And so they wanted the best of the best, these rabbis, these, these people. And so, and so you have the rabbi and they would have what you call a disciple. Understand? These disciples took this stuff seriously. Man, could it be? Could it be? Could it be that, that, that we have diluted the term disciple in our culture? In Western civilization, we, 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 we kind of interchange some terms. We, we just say, oh, am I a member of this church? Uh, uh, we, 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 we dilute it because what that term member does, it, it, it probably starts connecting to other things that we, uh, that, 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 that we think of when we think of membership, right? It may be like your gym membership. Uh -huh. We treat a disciple we treat our relationship with God like we treat our gym membership. I might go to the gym or I might not go to the gym. It's just a matter of preference, right? If, 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 if I don't like that gym, I'll go to another gym. If I don't like that gym, I'll go to another gym. And if all the gyms is getting on my nerves, I just cancel my whole gym membership. Sometimes that's how we treat church. Sometimes that's how we treat being a disciple of Christ. We, we have diluted the term and interchanged it, disciple and member. And God is not calling you to be a member. He is not calling you to do that. No, 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 no. He's calling you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's calling you to be close to him. He's calling you to make sacrifices for him. He's calling you to be a disciple of Christ and go, watch this, and go out and make other fishermen of men. He wants to make you a fisherman of men. He wants you to go out and share the gospel. That's what he says right here in this text. And watch this. This is what I love about Jesus, right? Jesus, hear me, Jesus didn't go pick the top 20 or 30%. <laughs> if you look at this text, we see that Jesus chose right here in these five scriptures. He chose four fishermen. These fishermen, they weren't probably the brightest as it relates to scriptures. They weren't scholars of scripture. They weren't walking around quoting all the texts in scriptures. Their professions was fishermen. Interesting. Why would Jesus pick some fishermen? Out of all the people, why not go around and start looking for all the smart people? Why not go around looking for all the people who have mastered the scriptures? Why not? Why, Jesus, did you go around and you pick these fishermen? Interesting. Perhaps you are viewing right now and you're saying, Ahmad, I really don't read scriptures like that. Ahmad, I really not engage into the Bible like that. Ahmad, I really don't pray about a lot of things. Watch this. God is saying, and understand this, you are not the top 20 or 30%. I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but you're not. But watch this. This is what God is saying. This is what Jesus said. He's saying that if you are feeling convicted when I'm saying this right now, he's saying I'm looking for you to become a disciple. Oh, because watch this. Watch this. Jesus says, I will make you fishermen of men. I will create you into fishermen of men. You are in the best position to be a fisherman of men, to be a fisherman of women, to be a fisherman of people. You person that does not engage into scriptures. You person that does not engage into kingdom work. You are the one that is in the best position. Watch this because you can't take credit for it. <laughs> Jesus is going to get the credit because he will create you into a disciple. 
Oh, I love this. And I'm still wondering and I'm still imagining why is it that Jesus told, chose fishermen? Well, I can imagine the one reason that he chose a fisherman is because fishermen would get up at the crack of dawn. Huh? He would get up at the crack. They would get up at the crack of dawn, mending their nets. They would get up before the sunrise, mending their nets, preparing the whole day to be out in the sea fishing. They were not lazy people. If we desire to be fishermen of men, if we desire to follow Jesus, he needs us to make sacrifices. He needs us to be close to him. And he needs us not to be lazy people. These fishermen were not lazy people. They got up at sunrise, mending their nets, preparing the day. This is what I love about fishermen. Watch this. Fishermen are courageous. They go out into the deep waters. Huh? To where it's dark blue, not shallow blue. They're not standing right there at the shores looking for fish. No, they get into their boats and they go out into the deep. They have courageousness already sitting on the inside of them. Could it be God is calling you to be courageous for his kingdom? Right there in the text, I love this. Fishermen are patient. Oh, yes, they are. Fishermen are patient. Watch this because they just, what? They'll sit out in the middle of the sea and they'll throw the nets. And nothing happens. They'll pull it back in. And they'll throw the nets. And nothing happens. And they'll pull it back in. And they'll throw the net. And nothing happens. And they'll pull it on back in. What I need you to see. Watch this. Patience is not the fact that you're just waiting. Patience is how you act while you wait. Oh, that's what I love. See, the fishermen, they ain't out there throwing the net. And with a bad attitude. Well, these fish, they ain't biting today. We may as well go back in. I give me my net on back and I'm going to take it on. No, 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 no. The fishermen are saying, I'm going to throw the net and I'm going to wait. And I'm going to pull it back in. I'm going to throw the net. I'm going to have a positive attitude because I know something is going to happen. Oh, this is what I love about fishermen. Watch this. Another thing about fishermen is that fishermen already understand unity. They understand that one person is the captain. <laughs> they understand that one person may be rowing the boat. They understand that one person may be throwing the nets. They already understand unity. Could it be that Jesus chose these fishermen <laughs> because he saw these characteristics already living on the inside of them? And this is my last one, and I'm done with this particular point. Then watch this. I love fishermen because they got faith. What do you mean, Amad? They have faith. Watch this. Because they throw the nets into the sea and they can't even see the fish. But they believe that the fish is in the sea. Could it be that Jesus is calling you to have faith in him? That he will make you into a disciple. And all you got to do is throw the net and trust that he is going to make some fish come out of that thing. I love fishermen. That is the beautiful thing about this text. God is calling you to be a fisherman of people. Oh, he wants you to make sacrifices. He wants you to stay close to him. He wants you to put your priorities in order. He wants you to leave your nets. He wants you to put uh, relationships in check. He wants to know that, you're, that, 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 that he is number one in your life. And what he's saying to you, if you commit to me, when you decide to follow me, I, Jesus, will make you. I, Jesus, will create you into a fisherman. This story, and I'm done. Man, I was out uh, fishing one day fishing for people. And I was having a conversation with this, uh, with this mother, and she had two teenage girls. And I was talking to her, and I said, ma'am, I'll just have a few minutes. Uh, I was standing there. She was walking by, and I said, I would just like to share something with you. She asked me what I wanted to share, and I told her I wanted to tell her about who Jesus was. She said, sweetheart, young man, I already know who Jesus is, however, my, my two teenage girls don't. I don't mind you sitting and talking to them for a second and telling them about who Jesus is. And so I began to have a conversation with the kids, the teenage girls, and I was telling them about who Jesus was. I was telling them, I was telling those kids about how we had a broken, about how in the beginning the world was beautiful and it was good and it was perfect. And then sin creeped into the world like cancer and made it broken. And that we all contribute to this broken world. And that if we believe in Jesus, he can restore our relationship with him. And I start telling him about who Jesus was and how great he was to people. And how he did stuff for people who didn't even do nothing for them. And how he 
He, he died for all of our sins, regardless of what they were. He died on the cross, and all we had to do was believe in him and repent and change our ways and turn from those sins, and he would uh, uh, accept us into the kingdom. I told him that one day he's gonna, that, 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 that he's going to come back for his people. And as I was telling the two, the, the, the two teenage girls about who Jesus was, the mothers just started crying. And she said, I have to make a confession. I have not spoken to God in years. Son, I had a miscarriage before I had these two girls. And I was so angry with God. I never spoke to him since. And I just realized that he gave me two more children. And I ain't even said thank you. The woman just started crying right then and there. Her kids start crying right then and there. And then I said, would you like to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ right now? And she said, yes. And then she helped me lead her two teenage girls to Christ. What am I trying to say? I said, um, what I'm trying to say is God is looking for some people to just open their mouths and share the love of Jesus and watch him work. And I'm just trying to ask you on this evening, watch this. When is the last time, uh-oh, well, here it is. When is the last time, I need you to listen, watch this. When is the last time that you've went fishing for people? When is the last time you walked up to someone and told them, I want to tell you about the story of Jesus? When is the last time you walked up to somebody and told them, I don't care what you've done in your life. Jesus Christ is here right now, ready to forgive every sin that you've committed. When is the last time that you told somebody? that Jesus Christ loves you. I invite you on this evening, I invite you through this message to become a disciple of Jesus. This is a call to follow Jesus. This is a call to make sacrifices. This is a call to leave your nets. This is a call to put in order your relationships. This is a call to become a fisherman of people and let Jesus turn you into a disciple for him. Let Jesus turn you. Let him create you. This is what Jesus is asking you to do. He's asking you to commit to him. He's asking you to follow him. And this is that call to become a follower of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. When I die, I want to be known that I did what I did for Jesus. Can you say that? Would you like to do that? I would like to invite you, viewer, I would like to invite you, new generation member, to engage into the work of the ministry of evangelism, to get out here and share the love of Jesus Christ with all people. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Maybe you think that you are not good enough. Maybe you're thinking, I need to get some stuff together. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not good. I don't make enough money. I just sinned last night. What I'm trying to tell you is the only thing Jesus needs from you is that you believe in him and that you repent for your sins. Repent simply means that I am going to turn away from my sins and follow Jesus. If you believe that, and if you would like to do that, I invite you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we here at New Generation Church would love to take you into that relationship with him. Man, Jesus Christ, he was on the cross. I remember, I can see it right now. Jesus was on the cross. There was a couple of guys next to him. One on this side, one on this side. One guy made fun of him. One guy got to talking crazy to Jesus. The other guy said, you don't even deserve to be up here. Would you remember me when you go to your kingdom? Jesus Christ said, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. All he had to do was believe and turn away from his sins. And I know that that man that was on that cross is in, in paradise today. Why? Because Jesus said so. And I believe and we believe that whatever Jesus said is true. So I'm asking you today, all you have to do is believe in Jesus and the gift of God is yours. Man, I love you and I thank you. Share this message. Be blessed.